When I was curating the best Airsoft AK video, well, you're looking at it right now on screen, and if you haven't watched it, click on the card above. I realized we have not done the old AK platform enough justice. While yes, every time I've reviewed an AK before, I've never shied away from telling you guys that I'm a dyed in the wool AR guy. But I also feel like I do have the ability to be objective. And not just objective, there have been more than one time I feel like I've been, ooh, dare I say it, AK curious. So what I'm trying to say is, after the last video, these Russian beauties have been doing their best to seduce me and giving them more screen time. And to be very honest, and like I said, objective, we just never did a video on a certain category of AK or brand, and that is the SEMA AKs. Well, to be honest with you, my first experience with SEMA has been, well, less than favorable. Speaking from personal experience, the first time I handled one of these guns was given to me by my friend, a good friend of mine where we used to play a lot of outdoor games with. And no joke, when he handed me this thing, I shot a couple times and it literally disintegrated in my hand. Front end fell off and it just, it died in my hands. There are many different SEMA AK variants for me to choose from. And so I settled on this one, the CM040, which is patterned after the AKS-74. The AKS-74 is a contemporary AK chambered in 545 and features a folding stock that was designed to work ideally with airborne infantry for the Russian military. Aesthetically, I've always preferred the AK-74 variants of rifles. Proportionately and just design-wise, I feel like they're the best examples from Kalashnikov. Looking at the gun, externally, it's pretty good. The metal body is well made and the plastic bits are pretty clean as well. Now with that said, that there's a surprise up its sleeve and you may wonder why I have this decommissioned motor right here next to me. And that's because the metal bits that you see on this gun, well, it's steel. And I'm not talking about maybe a few bits. Let's see how much of this gun is steel. Well, start with the, the stock. Well, that, that's steel. That's steel. That's steel. Oh, charging handle is not. Gas block. Outer barrel. Oh, 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 just calm down. Flash hider. Trigger guard. Magazine release latch. Fire selector. All but the charging handle, and this outer barrel. Everything is steel, which I am very surprised. Internally, these guns are standard version 3 AEGs, which means they're ideal for players that want to modify their guns. They're also TM specs, so if you're looking for internal parts, make sure you find one that are TM compatible. The parts that come with this gun are already said to be improved and more robust than the ones that came in the past. And essentially being a TM clone, this opens up a whole new world of possibility for you to supercharge this gun. While it may not have things like a MOSFET or electronic triggers, it does have a fuse, so at least there's a minimum amount of protection. You can also access the battery compartment by opening this top by pressing the latch, opening it up. Here is the connector and the aforementioned fuse. You can also adjust the hop up by pulling back the charging handle and you, and you can adjust the hop-up using the hop-up arm right here. The front flash hider is threaded in 24 millimeters clockwise. So you can use those AK type muzzle devices such as Azura Dynamics or whatever else. I'm using 0.2 gram BBs and an 8.4 volt battery. Here we are at landing zone, it's so good to be back here at the range, and I'm with the AKS-74 from SEMA, and today we're gonna start off our shooting test with the trajectory. We're gonna see how well these BBs fly out of this gun. Now, it does come with a 300 round high cap magazine. The sights are adjustable, it's all dialed in. Can't wait, let's do this. Kinda missed this.
All right, guys, I just want to address something really quick right here. It looks like the gun is over hopping the BBs a little bit, but in all actuality, it is because of the angle of the camera, how the BB flight path is overlapping with the target itself. So it looks like it's cresting way too high, but in reality, it wasn't. When we were shooting it, the gun was shooting about as straight as straight could be. The BB flight trajectory is quite straight. And you know what? The gun hasn't fallen apart in my hands yet, so that's definitely a win. It feels very solid while we're talking about the build quality. I mean, for its price and being made with so much steel, you're definitely getting your money's worth. Now let's move on to accuracy. All right, so I have our target set about 10 or so meters away. I wanna see just how tight of a group our SEMA can hold. Clearly it can fly and hit something 30 meters out and then some, I'm absolutely sure of this. So we're gonna see at this range just how accurate the gun is going to be. You know, I do really enjoy shooting guns that are so analog, AEGs that are analog. The reason, what I'm trying to say is, these guns don't have any fancy MOSFETs or programmable triggers in it. And it's, it's very refreshing to shoot sometimes. I'm nothing against the MOSFET guns. Those are fun guns and great guns in their own right. But like I said, when I reviewed the LCT a while ago, this thing is it's fun, it's fun to shoot. Take a couple more shots. Take a look at those results. All right, a couple of flyers here on the outside, but hey, every AEG does it. However, look at this fairly tight group it held right here in the center and a little bit further up area. I have to say, this SEMA is certainly shattering my perceptions of this gun. So the one thing I haven't done yet is to shoot this thing with the stock folded. Now, first thing I wanna say right off the bat, response of the SEMA is way better than any other old entry levels, AK or, well, M4 for that matter, that I have shot in a long time. And this stock is so satisfying to just flip open. It doesn't feel like it's stuck on anything. It's smooth, it's light, it feels nimble. And even though this gun is an entry level gun and it's got all the steel to it, it's still very easy to operate. It doesn't feel heavy and bulky, and I can feel like I can trace target to target. You know, I feel confident in using it. You know, the selector is nice and easy to actuate. I can flip it down right away. And there's something to be said about this gun being used in conjunction with an 8.4 volt battery. It's nice and snappy, not as sluggish like a 7.4, but it's not too much like an 11.1. And you'll see it when we do full auto, like right now. You know, with all that said and done, I feel like my expectations are a little shattered because with the old SEMA AK, and while maybe I'll still snicker at it a little bit when I hear its name being brought up with other AKs, I no longer think that it's a meme gun or a joke. It's pretty legit. And I think you are getting a good amount of value out of this gun. Now, back to the studio. Interesting results all around. If you wanna watch more AK videos, why don't you click on the card above where it's gonna direct you back and checking out the best airsoft AKs that we just recently did. Or if you wanna look at something that's gas blowback, you can watch the Tokyo Marui AKM gas blowback AK video. You know, I came into this review with the thought thinking that this gun was gonna be hot doo-doo. And like I said earlier, it was a process of discovery for me as well. I was thoroughly impressed with the build quality. I mean, most of this gun 
is steel and it does feel very robust, save for the little bit of wobble in the handguard and a little bit of wobble in the magazine when you shake it, but that doesn't really take away from the overall performance of the gun. Especially when my mind was already colored with the fact that the last SEMA I used was nothing more than a glorified piece of, well, that, a, you know, something not so flattering. Performance wise, there's something to be said about shooting a gun with no fancy electronics running it. While there's nothing wrong with MOSFETs and electronic triggers and whatnot and all of those fancy things, but just sometimes shooting guns like this, it's, it's just fun. It's just like driving a car that doesn't have a turbo. You get to feel the engine and everything that it does. It's oddly satisfying. Whatever shortcomings that this gun may have really doesn't matter because as the gun sits right now, as you see out of the box, it's under 180 bucks. It's like 175, 99 or something around that range. And with that said, anything that is wrong can easily be remedied. Or if you took a different approach and you use this as, you know, a donor gun to really strip the internals and put in high quality, parts well you're potentially looking at a race car or at the very least a really high quality sleeper that's going to keep up with the best of them think about all the different gears or potentially just taking that money and investing in a titan and voila you have a high performance aeg what i took away from this review is first impressions are very important my first impression of the sema was not all that good However, I feel like my mind has changed and has come around a bit now that I've got a chance to spend some time with a current version from SEMA themselves. However, that's me. But for you guys, I have a question for you. Seeing that this is such a great platform to build upon, what would your dream build be if this was the gun you got? Now let me know all of that in the comment section below. And if you want cool guns like this and many more, don't forget to check out our online store at www.railwithairsoft.com. My name is Mark, AKA Blue Steel. Like this video if you thought it was cool, share with your friends. And if you haven't done so yet, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you get notified every time we upload a new video. And until we upload that new video, I'll catch you guys next time.